Hey you guys, how are we doing? It's a beautiful blustery afternoon here and I'm just making the final preparations before tomorrow when I head out to explore the coast to coast trail. So it's from St Bees in Cumbria to Robin Hood's Bay right across the country and it's just shy of 200 miles. Now I'm going to be walking the walk in 11 days so I'm allowing 13 days with a travel day either side and I thought what I'd do as it's customary is to show you what's in my pack and give you an idea of the kind of things that I'm taking. So this 11 days then, this is actually the longest trail I've done so far, completely solo, unsupported and camping all of the way. So my pack is, is a work in progress. I'm actually quite pleased with what I managed to get it down to, but it's definitely heavier than I would like it to be. Uh, please check the description for the final sort of weight of my pack, my final pack weight. Uh, I haven't weighed it yet. I'm too scared to if I'm honest but I know I need to, and I'm definitely keen to try and strip this back even more. But of course, I'm walking through some high country, I'm walking through the Pennines, I'm walking through moorland, so I really do have to make sure I'm prepared and not be stupid about the kind of things that I'm taking out and deciding to leave behind. So, first thing we're gonna do then is start with the top, and then we're gonna work our way down the bag and explore all the different things that I've got in here, then pack it back up, and then we'll just finish with a conclusion and uh, what I might actually do is make another follow-up video just to see how I got on, what I used, what I didn't and what I would, things would look like next time. The final thing then before I get started is actually the rucksack itself. This is my Osprey Exos 48, my trusty backpack, Little John as it's aptly been named by my Facebook followers uh, that comes with me on all of my hikes. I'm really pleased I've managed to stick to a 48 litre pack. You know if I took my 58 I think I'd be quite sad. I want to save that for the longest trails that I'll ever be doing. Um, so 48 is coming along, very happy about that. And what you'll also get to do, I guess, as we take stuff out is see what the pockets and things look like on this rucksack. But if you'd like a full breakdown uh, sort of description or review of the pack, then I've got a separate video that's linked below. And if you'd also like to just see how I'm kind of getting on with this at the moment, because I've owned this for a good five or six years now, then I've also done a sort of review of the review, sort of explaining the pros and the cons that I've worked out with this backpack. Anyway, without further ado, let's start with the top. So what we've got here, just unhooked that, hook that back on, great, <laughs> is the top pocket. So first things first, this is a dry bag. In here is my wallet. I've got a bit of cash in there, I've got my card. Uh, I've got an MP3 player and I've also got, that's it actually, that's everything in there. It's a small little dry bag and it's specifically there just so it's accessible. Next up, packet of tissues. <laughs> uh, I've also got in here, this is oh, some spare bags because they're just kind of useful and then in this one I've got three tubes which I'm actually going to take down to two so I've got an ibuprofen rub which is for my trap because it's torn and destroyed and I don't know what to do about it and I've also got some like bite and sting cream this time of year especially lower level we've got all the sort of horse flies that are out and sometimes if you can just put this on it stops you itching it and then it just helps it heal a li little bit quicker so I've got those there nice and accessible for when I'm actually out on the trail up next is just a little New Testament thing. That's normally in the dry bag actually, I don't know why it's not, it's escaped. Sun cream, this is gonna be important for the next few days. Uh, more tissues. Bearing in mind, you know, this is for 13 days worth of stuff. Uh, and then the last thing I've got in here, I think, yep, is just some hand gel. So again, that's accessible when I'm on the trail. Actually, I lie, that's not the last thing. I've also got some really, Vaseline for lips and any sort of chafing points and a little pen knife. There we go, so that's the top pocket. Then if we open this up and we come underneath, the next thing I've got is this underneath pocket. And in here I've got my head torch, so that's just kept in a little pouch, which I'm actually gonna take out of the pouch because it's unnecessary weight. And also in there is just some spare batteries. Nice tip with the head torch, flip one of the batteries around and then it won't turn on in your pack, so that'll help to save the battery. So head torch and a spare plastic bag and a spork. I always keep my spork in there because I'm renowned for losing it and it's very distressing. <laughs> Coming back to the main, actually we'll start with the front, we'll work our way out around. So then the front we've got this nice stretchy pocket which I really like. I like to be able to store things in here. Now this is where all the important stuff is. First of all this is my trailblazer coast to coast guide. Um, I am genuinely considering ripping stuff out as I go but all the important information is kind of at the front and then you've got all the maps and descriptions as you go further along. So I don't know, it's not really designed to rip apart, but it's quite nice to keep these things as well with all your information and notes on them as you work your way along the trail. But So I'm going to be using the Trailblazer Guide and I'm also going to couple that with this A to Z for walkers, uh, which is the OS map. 
what I have find very, or found very occasionally on the trail is that um, these hand-drawn maps just aren't enough because they're very isolated in the location that they're showing. So when there is a route closure and you can't see any markings or you're genuinely lost, it's nice to have an OS map and just be able to see the surrounding area, what things are looking like, what the topography is like, and be able to have escape routes, for example, if the weather turns. So it's important for me to carry both of these. It is kind of a luxury. There's a potential I could have done it with just this one, but I want to take both just to enhance my experience. And then this pouch here has got a little notebook in and all of my sort of travel information. It's got campsites, it's got my schedule. Um, so that's all in there and with a pen and a pencil. Hoping to chuck away scraps of paper as I go along because obviously you won't need those. So that's all kept nice and tidy in there. Also in the front, kind of clipped onto my rucksack, is a waterproof cover. This is a big, large waterproof cover. This pack would reality, in reality need just a medium, but the large is big enough to go over when I've got my tripod strapped to the front. And I'll show you the camera gear and stuff that I'll use in a minute. Uh, and up next, flip-flops in a bag might seem unnecessary but say you're wandering around on a wet morning there's dew on the ground then you can just keep them in there and not have to worry about everything else getting wet i would like to find a thinner plastic bag actually because every single gram matters <laughs> uh, also in this one this other little bag i've got um, my iceland hat which if you've watched any of my sort of winter videos you will have seen me wearing that I'm loyal to it. Uh, I've got some fingerless gloves and some normal gloves. I decided to go for sort of cheap normal gloves because my seal skins are just heavy and if I need those then I'll just be sad anyway. <laughs> so that's everything in the front there. So on the bottom, this big blue dry bag, that's actually my tent, that's my Hilleberg Acto. So it's a one person tent. I think it weighs 1.6 kilograms. So it is quite a bulk. Um, but you know, I trust it completely. If you'd like a full review of that, click the link below. Um, and I've also done a sort of recap review of that because I've owned it for four years. It's come on all of my backpacking trips. And I sort of just talk about the pros and cons there of what, what I like and don't like about this tent. So I'm not gonna take that off. That's strapped to the sleeping pad straps at the bottom. That's probably my least favorite part of packing away camp uh, in the morning is that it's just such a fiddle to get it on. But when it's on, it stays on. On the side, this side, I have a single flask that's empty at the moment, and then I've got a collapsible water bottle. And this is because there is genuinely very hot weather at the moment here in the UK, I'm not complaining. So I need to make sure I can get enough water where possible and just fill up and drink from that. That's nice and light. And then I've got another flask here. So I'll be carrying just shy of three litres um, or two litres and the additional one further one wherever possible. And then also on the side, I don't tend to store it here, is my GoPro. So this is what I film with. Usually I'm just holding this. So at the moment I'm still using a GoPro 3 Plus. I've got my sights set on a 6. I just need to actually get on an order one. Um, so we'll see that the fact that I carry so much camera gear also means I have to carry batteries, SD cards. And you know, that makes up a lot of my pack weight um, or certainly a fair percentage. And that's sort of stuff that most people don't have to carry. So that's why my pack sometimes weighs more than other people's. Uh, also just jammed in the side is a nice titanium uh, mug, which is 450 milliliters, sits in the flask like that, <clears throat> which is ideal. I'm just trying to make everything slot together nicely. So that's all of the pockets we've looked at. Let's have a look at the main compartment. So what I've got here actually just on the side, I was wearing this walking down. This is just a wrap jacket. It's a very thin soft shell that I tend to wear if it's quite breezy. Um, it's, it's double layered, so it's not necessarily the lightest thing out there, but I really like to wear it, it's comfortable. So what I'm debating is whether I just take this or I just take this, uh, or I take both of them, because I could wear that sort of when I'm actually walking if it gets cooler, because this is my Patagonia Nano Puff, which I'm absolutely loyal to. The idea is that this is my additional insulation layer for around camp, uh, or when I stop if it's breezy, you know, the weather turns in the mountains. It could be sunny like this in one minute and the next minute you've got thunderstorms with like very, very cold weather. So um, I'm still working out what I'm gonna take and I'll obviously talk about that in my review. I think it's quite likely I'm gonna take both and we'll just see how we go. So Nano Puff, this is stuffed around. I don't tend to put it in, it's kind of, I'll flip it inside out because you can put it in its own pocket um, just because I can stuff this in the corners and just really bulk out my pack. So that's the Nano Puff. 
Next up, straight away accessible. This is all my camera gear. See how much I've got there. So I actually have, um, what I'm filming on right now is my Canon 70D. I've got a Radio Mic Pro and I'm filming on a lightweight Manfrotto tripod. So that's what I carry with me as well as various spare batteries, as well as the camera bag. Um, and it's all kind of compact in that. So you can see that now. And then in here is my spare sort of GoPro stuff. I've got a little charger um, and just all the sort of electronics are kept in this dry bag. I'm just gonna wait for this helicopter to go past so that you can hear me properly. <laughs> We're gonna move on to the next thing in here. And what I've got straight away, also accessible, is my waterproof jacket. So this is my mountain equipment, La Hot Sea. Again, loyal to this piece of kit. It has withstood the elements and the test of time. I've got a separate review on that one. I like to review things, can you tell? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, mouse equipment, La Hotsi jacket, very important, I've got waterproof and that's also coupled further down with some waterproof trousers Now I pack those further down because it's very unlikely that I'm going to need them in the next couple of days. Uh, but the next big dry bag then, now this is the thing that makes me sad because this is just heavy. Uh, this is my food bag. So don't forget I'm on the trail for 11 days and then I've got a whole day's travelling including seven miles to walk on the final day which is my travel day. Uh, this is going to see me through that hopefully, although it probably won't. What I'm going to say is I've tried to be sensible with this. The Coast to Coast has various uh, pubs en route. So I'm actually carrying five evening meals, I'm carrying breakfast for every day, and I'm carrying snacks or lunch for pretty much most of the days. I'm hoping to supplement that with different things that I can buy along the way. Um, but if we just show you what we've got in here then. So I've got a couple of luxury sort of latte sachets because they actually just help me to drink more. I just don't drink enough when I'm on the trail. Uh, here's my like favorite thing that I'm carrying. This giant wedge is squares bars, which I think is a fantastic way to get in some sugar, some calories, and they're really quite lightweight. These will keep for a while. They're an airtight bag. They were made by my friend very generously, and I'm so happy to be carrying these. They're like just edible pieces of love. So um, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's like six days worth of squares bars. So you can tell I like them. <laughs> Uh, so that's a way for me to try and keep the weight down. I'm also looking at sort of baking my own um, like fruit bars or muesli bars just again to keep the weight down. I don't need to worry about packaging and all the commercial stuff. Uh, so then we'll look at what I've got here for my evening meals that I am going to be eating and carrying myself. Uh, this is a mixture of adventure food dehydrated ration packs. I say a mixture. I've got pasta or fungi and vegetable hot pot as you can see here. So these, you know, these weigh 150 grams each or just shy of that. So I'll be really glad when I'm actually eating these because that'll help get the weight down. And then I've also got here uh, a muesli packet, which is again, 600 calories. All of these are 600 calories. Calories are so important on the trail. I can never, ever, ever get enough calories. Um, so that's why I carry these. That yes, I could carry um, couscous or I could carry noodles, but it's just not enough calories. And when you're trying to like eat four packets of noodles for one of these, it's just not worth it. Uh, also for the bulk as well. So I've got a 600 calorie pack of muesli here and that's because one of my days is 28 miles. I kind of panic saying that out loud, but it has to be done. Um, so <laughs> I'm hoping to just fuel myself quite early in the morning and then just storm by and hopefully land at a pub in the evening. Uh, so that's to really start my day well. And then the rest of the day is what I've got is these little golden syrup, 250 calorie packets of oats. Um, again, it's all bulk, but thankfully, the more you eat, the more it goes down. So that is the pro or the good thing about carrying this stuff. Um, and then the final things I've got then are some Chia Charge bars. I've got a mixture in here. Uh, Chia Charge are my main sponsors for the four episodes that I'm gonna be filming this year. So I've got the Coast to Coast, then I'm heading out for the West Highland Way and the Great Glen Way. And then I'm gonna add on the Two Moors Way, potentially with the Cleveland Way further on, later on in the year, just depending on sort of what the weathers and seasons are doing. Um, so I've got some Chia Charge bars, which are basically um, like flapjacks incorporated with Chia seeds and just a few more sort of cereal bars and like coffee sachets, coffee. Like, sorry, but I cannot walk a walk without coffee. So that's the food bag. You can see there is a lot in there, which is why it's kind of fair that it weighs a lot. Um, but it is nice to know that that's going to go down. And also I'm buying pub meals, so that's going to help get my calories up. And I'm going to just try and buy things along the way. But I'm pretty sure by the time I reach Wreath, which is after my longest day, ironically. Um, I don't think there's any other stores or shops, so I'm just really hoping to just eat loads and then <laughs> walk well. Um, so the next biggest thing in my bag is this. So this is my clothes bag. What you can probably tell right now is I'm wearing a cotton shirt. This is my, my branded shirt, 
welcome to spend more time in the wild. Um, so what I'll actually be wearing when I'm walking is probably, well, definitely a t-shirt. <laughs> definitely a t-shirt. Uh, so it will be probably the Chia Charge branded t-shirt or just one of my own. Um, and I'll also be wearing my Montane Terra pants. If you'd like to see a review of those, definitely check the link below. I, I'm just loyal to those pants. They, again, have seen me through seasons and they're awesome. So I'll be wearing those, uh, potentially one of these jackets as well, as we talked about. And this is all extra stuff then. So what you'll see is that two things in here are a luxury for me, although potentially three. So first thing then is I've got a vest top. Now it is gonna be hot and I'm also gonna try and be sensible, but I would like to wear a vest top on the hottest and stillest of days just to really help me breathe. And I'm not just sweating into everything. It's gonna sort of prolong the life of the stuff that I'm wearing. Uh, I've got a t-shirt. So I'll have one t-shirt that I'm wearing, one spare t-shirt. I have a spare sports bra. Always nice to change that. <laughs> I have another pair of Montane Terra pants because they're really light, they pack down nicely, they're fast drying, and I just want to take the two. Um, now these are my luxuries, basically. I have a pair of shorts. So these are just Northridge shorts. And again, they're for the hottest and hottest of days, but I'm also hoping to sleep in those. And you can see they do pack down quite nicely. Um, and then I have another t-shirt, another t-shirt, but this is solely for sleeping in. Now, I could sleep in what I'm walking in, but I actually find that it just disturbs my sleep because I'm just getting all that sweat back, rubbed back into my skin. I am staying at campsites for the duration of this walk. Not all of them have showers, but where I can shower, I will. Personal hygiene is so important on the trail. Make the most of what you're paying for. Um, so just by sleeping in cleaner clothes, it's just going to help me to have a better night's sleep, which is going to therefore help my my um, performance the following day. So, you know, I don't necessarily need to take that. And in theory, I don't even need this other pair of trousers. I could just wear the one the whole way. And actually, I might just do that, genuinely considering doing that. <laughs> um, so anyway, so those are the trousers and tops. And then I have three pairs of underpants. I'll obviously be wearing one, I'm not going commando. And then I have got, what have I got? Yes, so I'll have three pairs of socks that I'm carrying and I'll be wearing one. That is a lot of socks for 12 days. So that's basically one pair of socks for three days. I wouldn't normally carry that much, but actually I'm doing this sort of experiment to see whether I can look after my feet more or to see whether changing socks actually pays off with regards to foot hygiene and just maintaining the quality of my feet so that by the end of the walk, I can still walk rather than hobble. Um, athlete's foot is kind of something, or certainly like this rash, I just seem to get, even if I wear like, my normal socks for a couple of days my feet just get all rashy and it's really uncomfortable so i'm hoping to sort of change my socks every three days the first pair of socks i'm wearing are a really old pair of socks they're very comfortable but they are old so i'm going to wear those for three days and then trash them so that i'm not carrying them so say goodbye we'll depart on a lovely walk i have no problem with that and then that'll leave me carrying two um wearing another pair and then i'll just gradually see how we go. If if I'm finding that actually, do you know what? I just need the two pairs. Then one of them can be my sleeping pair. That'll just help me to stay insulated in the night. My sleeping bag's quality, but you know what it's like on a clear day like today in the night, it gets very, very cold. So just got those those to consider there with the socks. Um, and then the sort of, we're, get, we're getting there. This is bulky, to be honest. This is waterproof trousers and gaiters, they're ankle gaiters. I feel quite sad about having to carry those, but you've just got to, you know, I'm, I'm messing around in the Pennines here. It's not like it's the Southwest coast, although that's just, what am I on about? We're in the UK, the weather changes, I need to be prepared. Waterproof trousers and gaiters. <laughs> this is actually not gonna be kept here. I'm still sort of shuffling this bout, but this is my first aid kit. I've really honed this down to all of the essential things. Um, a new thing for me that I'm gonna be trying is kind of physio tape that I can use on my knee because my knee gets a bit dodgy going downhill. Maybe gonna try it on my trap as well, but I've also read about it being good for stopping blisters. Now, normally I use blister plasters. You know, I, I put Vaseline on, I just catch hot spots straight away. I also use duct tape, but things come off and I'd really like to try this physio tape to see if, it's, see if it sticks better and also just reduces that friction between the sock and my foot and, excuse me, and of course the boot as well. So I've got that in there. I've got some scissors. I've got sort of, it's sort of split in half. One side's kind of medication. Uh, paracetamol, ibuprofen, multivitamins, and then the other half is um, like dressings and plasters and just precaution stuff. So first aid kit. Next up, wash kit. Uh, this is in a transparent bag. You've probably watched some of my other videos or if you've watched some of my other videos, you see normally I keep this in a dry bag. I'm just trying to keep my weight down. So I put it in this, this sealable bag. 
So I've got a travel towel there. I've got some toothpaste. I've got some tweezers, which are good for ticks and whatever else you want to use tweezers for. I have half a razor. Don't really know why I have that. Uh, then I've got some shampoo, some shower gel, toothpaste, toothbrush, and the biggest thing in here, other than the towel, is a big tube thing of sort of foot rub. Again, trying to help my foot, feet, um, help keep them hygienic. So basically my plan is get to the campsite, sort everything out, have a shower, then look after my feet. So I'm gonna smother them in this stuff, massage them, keep them clean, keep them aired. So I'll wear my flip flops whilst I'm in camp um, until the next day when I just repeat that. So I've got enough of that to see me through quite a while so that I can actually be generous with looking after my feet. Self-care is very important, people. Don't underestimate the importance of it. Uh, so next up, final three things in here then. This is my jet boil and a, what is this? A bowl, that's what it is. I'm trying to find a bowl that's lighter than this. You know, I've looked at the collapsible ones, I've looked at others, but this is genuinely quite light. I could just use it as that if I wanted to, that's considerably lighter. But the nice thing about this weird sort of thing is that it kind of, it's like self-cleaning. So like I could have porridge in it and I can really scrape it around with a spoon and everything comes out. So it's genuinely like clean. We're talking backpacking here. It's not like anti whatever it is, antibacterial. It's just clean. It looks clean. So um, that's the advantage of that. I could just use that if I wanted to. But the nice thing about this is it sits on there like that. So it couples with my, um, my jet boil quite well. The jet boil itself, this is jet boil flash. Have a look at my view. Again, review there. Uh, so it's the lid. You've got some gas in there. I am taking 110 grams worth of gas actually, just because I want to make sure I'm covered. Uh, and then obviously just the jet boil. Uh, and then I have Thermoris Venture. Love this roll mat. If you'd like a review, it's in the link below. And the final, final thing then, this is my Rap, Rab Neutrino 400 sleeping bag. Still quite new to it actually, but I really do like it. It's um, just great for sort of three season use. It's, it's reasonably light and it sits nicely in the bottom of the pack. So this Mirage or mass even of multiple colored stuff is everything I'm taking with me on the coast to coast. So I'm just gonna quickly pop it all back in. Um, I just also realized at the bottom of here screwed up, which everything should have been in. It's just a rucksack liner, which is arguably not needed because I have a waterproof cover, but it's just quite nice to keep everything together. So I'm just gonna pop everything back in and then we'll just finish with a little conclusion and summary. And there you have it. So that's everything packed away for 13 days on the trail, completely solo, other than the fact that I'll be stopping at pubs and campsites. Uh, if you'd like a full sort of detailed breakdown of my schedule uh, or itinerary, then have a look in the link below. I've sort of written that all out. I've put details of the different campsites that I'm staying at. And uh, I think the only thing left for me to do is to get a good night's sleep because tomorrow I've got six different trains to catch and then that'll take me to St. Bees and then the following day I'll begin my journey. So guys, if you have any advice for myself or other watchers of things to sort of get weight down without being completely minimal, then please do share that below. If you've got any sort of ideas or feedback or if you're looking to do a trail yourself and you'd just like some advice, then just comment below. You know, my channel is all about people sharing ideas, bouncing things around off each other. So um, be open and enjoy the outside. This is what it's here for. It's a wonderful, wonderful area, this country. We have so much going on. So please get adventuring and spend more time in the wild. I'll see you next time. <laughs> All right, I'm just heading back and uh, I realized I forgot to show you what's in my hip pocket. But what's quite cool is you can see, this is how I walk with my DSLR. Normally I've got, well, you can see here, little carabiners. So I clip it to me. It does mean I'm very much tied to my rucksack, but it just stops it slopping around so much, especially when I'm on gnarly terrain. Uh, and the other things then, so my left hand side, I've got here, this is my compass and I've got a little pacing chart. Quite nice to me have those figures and some pacing beads or timing chart even, sorry. Oh, it's windy. And the other thing on this side, this is normally where I have a cereal bar or two. And then this is a packet of tissues. Why am I showing you a packet of tissues? <laughs> Uh, and the final thing is I keep some GoPros in here or GoPro batteries even in this pocket as well So I don't need to stop all the time. So that's literally everything. Anyway, I'm gonna head back. And I'm gonna sleep I'll see you on the trail <laughs>